Mr. Brandt, now I've got a puzzle for you. Man A wants to kill Man B. What am I told? It's kind of a minimum information problem, sir. The men are in a room, sir. Say this room. Lots of people downstairs. And Man A, the killer, he plans to use a gun. And the shot would be heard. Not with a silencer, sir. He also would have to get rid of the gun. He would have to hide the gun. So the killer brings an umbrella with him. May I see your umbrella, sir? An umbrella to conceal a gun? Audacious and foolhardy, I would say. But you may test your theory if you wish. Oh, I don't have a gun, sir. Never carry one. The killer has a gun. Uh, with a silencer, so you said. You see, sir, the killer plans to put the gun in the umbrella and then hide the umbrella in the fireplace and take it away some other time. Ah, but then there would be soot on the umbrella. You are absolutely right, sir. There would be soot. Now, there is a second use for the umbrella. You see these here? They're like loud firecrackers. We call them squibs. Now, the killer plans to fake some shots because the victim is already dead. I suggest that these squibs would uh, leave bits of paper when they explode. Telltale evidence. That's why, sir, the killer plans to catch the shreds in here. Most ingenious, Lieutenant, but wouldn't the squibs leave burns, scorch marks? Now, this umbrella, for instance, is quite unmarked. You are absolutely right, sir, but suppose this were the killer's other umbrella. Oh, I forgot to tell you, sir. Last night, when I was at your house, I took the wrong umbrella. Excuse me, sir. Just one moment. I took yours. It was an honest mistake, sir, and we're not allowed to get evidence that way. But as long as I had it, uh, the lab found burns from the squibs and lots of soot, sir. I see. Now. Tell me this, Lieutenant. How were the squibs detonated? Oh, the killer is a very intelligent man, sir. Watch. I put the squibs in the umbrella and the gun. Uh, we'll pretend that this is the gun. Now the killer wedges the umbrella up the chimney. You can't be serious. Oh, I am, sir. I am absolutely serious. Now, we'll just pretend that this umbrella is up the chimney. Now, these wires, sir, they're attached to a battery and the same kind of squibs. Now, we'll just put these in the umbrella. And we'll run this wire, sir right over here to the patrol. We push the play button. And we attach the wires here and here. Where I showed you those scratches, sir. Preposterous nonsense. Now, the killer knows when the record will end. Yes, yes, you demonstrated all that. And when the arm comes over, it will make contact. First here, exploding one squib, and then here, exploding the second. But the body fell between the two shots. Yes, sir. That's where the killer has to take a very big chance. The dictionary has a line here dividing it in half so that it can be balanced on the edge. You see, sir? Like this. Clever, but too unpredictable. Important for the illusion, sir. Sound of the body falling. You've got it. But impossible to tie. But this killer is very smart, sir. Can he make the book fall between the two shots? Oh, yes. How? Triggered by what? I'll show you. He would have to be a genius. I think so, too, sir. 
Now, I don't mean to imply that I thought of this all by myself. I mean, some of the smartest people in the world are right here in this club, and they help me, sir. They help me a lot. <laughs> the dunces, the lot of them. Mr. Danzinger, the president of the club, you wouldn't call him a dunce. Oh, wouldn't I? <laughs> well, it was his idea, the book, the vibrations. Vibrations? What are you talking about? The first squib, sir. He really made it sound very simple. When the swim goes off, it produces vibrations, and that knocks the book down. That Danzinger's a genius. Vibrations, that nitwit. The man who conceived all this, you made him out to be a bungling ass. No, this is what he would have done. This. Just one more thing.